NASA uh, sent out a research announcement to uh, invite uh, bids and proposals from uh, scientists who had ideas on ways to build a track that would utilize the forces of electricity and magnetism to provide an initial velocity, uh, a little bit of a boost, you know, give us some launch assist. One of the advantages of looking at the uh, electric motor uh, maglev concept is the fact that all of the energy required for the initial start from zero velocity up to the 400 mile an hour is provided on the ground. There's no friction, there's no wheels, and there's no heat and power loss that's associated with friction and, and rolling uh, elements like bearings and wheels. With the uh, opening of the recent maglev train, it's been demonstrated and proving that the technology is, is there. It's possible and it's feasible to move large, heavy objects at fairly high speeds using simply electricity and the force of magnets, magnetism. The launch system is a fusion of two technologies, using the train and the plane to achieve a common goal. The train won't be going all the way to space, instead it will remain bound to its track as a flying vehicle is catapulted skywards. This is the uh, starting point or the end, end of the motor and uh, in this section would be the levitation and in the center section would be the linear motor. This bed here provides the levitation force or the uplifting against gravity. These sets of coils here provide a stabilizing effect in the side to side direction. Although NASA's models aren't yet ready to fly, they have proved that maglev trains could one day accelerate spaceships to over 1,000 miles an hour. Running through a tunnel of less dense gas like helium, friction from the air is reduced and the space train would have enough acceleration to launch its payload into orbit. But just how fast can the ultimate train go? The answer may be here at the Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. If any train deserves the prefix of ultimate, this has to be it. The Air Force's hypersonic upgrade program, or HUP, has taken over five years and $20 million to perfect. This is potentially the fastest railed machine on the surface of our planet. This is the Holloman High Speed Test Track. It's the most uh, precisely aligned uh, piece of rail in the world. Anywhere along it, it's uh, 11 thousandths of an inch in terms of alignment, both laterally and vertically. This track is the longest in the world, the fastest in the world, the most highly instrumented in the world. The sled run that we're getting ready to do tomorrow will fire a narrow gauge sled down this that goes 9,600 feet per second, or about 6,500 miles per hour. It will uh, set a new world land speed record for a railed vehicle. We're going nine times the speed of sound, or Mach 9, tomorrow night. At Holloman High Speed Test Track, speed records have regularly tumbled. The last record breaker back in 1982 smashed through Mach 8. Eight times the speed of sound, reaching over 6,100 miles an hour. The rail track is used for a variety of military high-speed research programs, from testing ejector seat systems to observing missile ballistics. These are ground-based tests that pave the way for flying prototypes.
Most of these trains ran with little more than a mannequin at the helm, but it wasn't always the case. In the 1950s, human guinea pig, Colonel John Stapp, was regularly accelerated through 40 Gs, suffering broken bones and retinal hemorrhaging in one of the tests. The HUP train is designed to deliver a warhead into its target at the highest possible speed. This train is too brutal for our railways, but the test will provide engineers with valuable hypersonic data. Mission HUP-80X G1 is hours away from launching into history. Dave Minto heads the team. It'll be very exciting, but we'll also be very nervous because we're doing something that's never been done before. Uh, we'll be venturing into the unknown. New things can happen in physics when you go to where you haven't been. We've done an extensive amount of modeling and simulation to try to make sure that we know exactly what's going to happen. But modeling and simulation is only as good as the physics we know. Uh, so there is an element of the unknown. Essentially a missile on rails, the HUP train is kept inside a protective tent until moments before the run. All right, well, this is the first stage of our sled train. Uh, it's got five uh, Pupfish rocket motors, which is the first stage of the multiple launch rocket system. Burns for about uh, 1.5 seconds. Uh, then we'll light up a second stage. The second stage has six of the same rocket motor, the multiple launch rocket system first stage. The third stage rocket motor is a new rocket motor that we've had developed. We call it the Super Roadrunner rocket motor. It produces 228,000 pounds of thrust, burns for about 1.4 seconds. That'll get us up to about 4,000 feet a second. And then we'll light up a fourth stage, which is the same rocket motor again, 228,000 pounds of thrust. Now that'll get us up to 9,600 feet per second or about 6,500 miles per hour. The train is designed to cover its single three-mile journey in a mere six seconds. Like a multi-stage space rocket, each section fires and then breaks away, accelerating the payload to a speed that's over four times faster than Concorde. But this train won't be stopping at a platform. It'll be slamming into its destination at full speed. At the end, we'll deliver this uh, payload, which is uh, on top of the fourth stage here, uh, into a target at, uh, at a velocity that's uh, of course, 9,600 feet per second, which will have about as much energy as if a car ran into a uh, brick wall at 2,000 miles an hour. Instead of wheels, which would tear apart, the train uses reinforced steel slippers that literally slide along the track. Like NASA's maglev, to reach the highest possible speeds, the HUP will run through an atmosphere of helium. Russ Kurtz explains. We've got this uh, helium tube, we call it, which is basically uh, four mil plastic that we create around the track and we fill with helium. And helium, as you know, is one seventh the density of air. It cuts down a great deal on the drag and it enables us to reach these higher speeds. As they learned in previous tests, moving through ordinary air at Mach 9 produces shockwaves so intense that steel can melt. In this case, as this uh, slipper was going down the track, what happened is you had shocks coming off the sides here, or shock waves, and impinging on this canard. And, and you can kind of see the melt. If you look really closely, that is a melted surface. It's more like a, a blowtorch came in here and started cutting this off. From a safe vantage point one mile away, the world's media wait patiently for word that all systems are go and the fastest train on Earth can launch. So you're going to hear 10, 9, 8, 3, 2, 1. 
but it's going to resume, so there's a gap there. Seconds before the sonic boom reaches the observers. Footage from the high-speed cameras shows the helium tube shattering as the train speeds through it. And still shots reveal hypersonic shock waves trailing in its wake. The snapshots also show the payload lifting off before it hits the target. The impact itself is so secret that the footage hasn't been released. Clocked at 6,480 miles an hour, it's a new world record. At these speeds, this train would, in theory, take just two minutes to travel from New York to Washington, D.C. And just over 25 minutes to cross America. Like the jet, high-speed rail is now capable of supersonic speeds. Soon, it could surpass it as the ultimate way to travel. Yeah.